So last time we talked about how to create our own local Git repository. Today we're going to talk about adding a remote repository which gives us the ability to push our code to a server and that server will hold that, that history of our code and allow us to have others gain access to the code from that same location. So in order to create a, a remote repository, I'm going to use GitHub. You could use a, a lot of different options, but that's what I'm going to use. And so here I am on GitHub and if you and for our class, we will all be using GitHub as well. So you'll want to create a profile. If you don't have a Git account, you'll want to make one. So on the main page here, you can click sign up. Uh, I've already done that, so I'm just going to log in. So here I have a list of repositories that I've created or contributed to. I'm going to make a new one by clicking the green button here, and I'm going to call this my new API. I'm going to let it be public, which means anyone on the internet can see this code. If you do not want it to be public, then change it to private. For our class, we will keep all of our code public. I am going to skip this step because you'll notice the initialize step because I've already got an existing repository. I have my own local repository and I do not want to initialize it on the remote. If I initialize it on the remote, there will be what's called an unmerged history. That means on my own local computer, I created files and on the remote, I created files. And those two events happened independently of each other. And because they happened before the two were connected, there will be a conflict. So in this case, because I've already created a local repository, I'm going to skip this step of adding any of these files and I will not check any of these boxes. I'm going to click the Create Repository button. On this page, you'll notice that we have a list of steps. So if you ever forget the steps that we've done on creating our own local repository, here they are conveniently displayed for you. The first step we used was to initialize our local repository. We did that from the terminal. So I did the git init command here. Right there. And the next step is to add any files. Now, this readme file just happens to be the first file we added. That's because it's a file that talks about the code that we're going to be putting in our repository. So we add, had another step where we added the readme file. Um, this next step is a message about the file we're going to commit. So I have that command here get commit dash M and then in quotes, I say something about why I'm making this change. So in my case, I said added readme file. The next step I have here is that I'm changing the default branch name that Git makes from master to main. And so I changed it by saying get branch dash M main, which renamed my branch. And then you'll notice we did not do this step previously. That's because we did not have an origin to add. Please do not add my origin for your Git repository because this is my re remote repository, not your remote repository. You will want to make one just for yourself and you'll want to push your code to that repository. So. In my case, I called it new API. That name probably will not match for you. You'll probably want to make a different one. Um, if you've already made one called new API, you can delete it under the settings. If you, if you want to change the name because it doesn't make sense for you, you can click delete this repository. I'm going to click the code tab to go back to where I was. And now I've got this last command. So I'm going to add this URL for my local repository and I'm, it's called an origin. An origin is a name for your remote uh, repository, but you could name it other things. The funny thing is nobody ever names their remote on anything other than origin. So just stick with that and everyone will understand the commands you're typing and the commands you're typing will match what you find on the internet.
So if I say get remote dash V right now, this is a handy way to see if I have a remote and where it is. Well, I don't have any, so it gave me nothing. The V is for verbose. So I'm gonna type get remote add origin, and now I'm going to give it a URL. So that's the URL. Now remember, remote is a git remote repository. So if I say git remote add, I'm adding one which I don't have now, and then I'm going to give it a name. The name of my remote is origin. I also need a URL, which I've given it. So I'm hitting enter, and if I type that same command I typed before, get remote dash V, I now see that it's pointing to a URL. So if I say get status, it says nothing to commit. You have to remember, however, that that means there's nothing new to commit to my local repository. Git status will not tell you with that command if you have something you haven't pushed to the remote repository. So if I say git push dash u origin main, this command is doing a few different things all at once. So I'm pushing my local repository to my remote, and I'm pushing to a specific remote called origin. I'm also specifying the branch that I'm pushing to on origin. So if you go back to GitHub, you will find there is a branch there called main and that's because I'm pushing my branch there. So if I hit enter, I'm going to allow the GitHub extension to authorize GitHub, uh, my VS Code. If you don't have the GitHub extension, you should install it. And the way you do that is by saying code, preferences, and extensions, and then here you find GitHub, and if yours is not installed, then there's an install button right here. So you can just click install. Um, it seems like I'm actually not using an extension. I think I'm using what's built into VS Code, so you may not need to do anything for that to work. So now if I go back to VS, excuse me, back to GitHub, if I reload this page, you will now see I have a branch called main, and you will see that the readme file got pushed to the same empty readme file. Now, if someone were to edit this readme file, either directly in GitHub or on their own computer, say it was my partner on, on my team, and they wanted to add something that said um, instructions to get started, and a command, for example, um, then we can do a preview of this file, and we need to have this extra line there. So here I'm given some options. The best thing we can do is to use something called pull requests to work with adding code to the main branch. That means people don't directly push their changes to main because if they do, they may not be correct changes or they may have bugs in them and it doesn't give us a chance to screen the code before it ends up on the main branch. So I'm gonna click create a new branch for this and start a pull request. And then I'm gonna click propose changes and I will now click create and you'll notice that there is now one pull request on this tab here if I click pull requests you'll see this one is open if I click on this word I will now be able to merge it so someone else on my team could review the change I've made by clicking this tab here files changed and then they could click on review changes and approve and it's saying I can't approve my own changes, which makes sense. And then lastly, but if it's someone else on your team, they could do it. Lastly, after they've approved it, I can click Merge Pull Request, Confirm Merge, 
and then I can delete this branch. Now, if I go back to the new API, you can see my readme has been updated with instructions to get started. However, you will notice my readme file here has not been updated. So the question is, what command do I need to get the code um, from this repository to my repository? Well, because I already have a remote and I'm already pointing to the remote called origin and it's this same repository, I just need a single command and that is git pull. That will pull the latest changes from the remote repository to my local repository. And now you'll notice that I have the changes here. So git pull is the way we get changes from the remote repository to our own repository on our own computer. If we want to push the code, we use the command git push. Now, if I were to add another command here, one last that says to run a test, for example, to, to run tests, we will add one more command here npm run test, but that code is not here. I need to do three steps. First, if I say get status, it will tell me I've got some code that I need to push, but it's not ready. So first I need to commit the code to my own local repository. How do I do that? What's the first part? The first part is to add the file to my commit. I can either say git add star star or git add dot to add everything in my local folder, or I can add a specific file using git add and the file name. That's what I'm going to do here. Now, I'm missing another step, aren't I? How do I make sure that this file ends up committed? Well, that's the key word. It has not been committed. So if I say git status, it says changes to be committed right here because I added it. If I added another file, say I need a git ignore file. This git ignore file is specifically for telling git to ignore specific files. So I want to ignore a folder called node modules. So I'm going to add that to my git ignore file. Well, if I say git status now, look at this. I've got an untracked file and I've got an uncommitted file. But the reason this one says it's ready to be committed is because I added it. Well, I could still have an open commit that I haven't finished, so I can now add the git ignore file. Now if I see git status, I see two files that are ready to be committed. And what's that command to commit it? git commit dash m, and then I'm gonna say something about it. Don't forget that. Added git ignore file and updated readme. That's what I'm gonna say. And then I close it with a double quote, <laughs> excuse me, double quote. So now I have all these changes on my local repository that have been committed. But if I come back to, to GitHub and reload, I do not see the new file, git ignore, or the changes to the readme. Why is that? What am I missing? I need to push the changes. So in this case, because I've already added the remote, I don't need to do that. And my branch has already been pointed to the remote branch called main. All I have to do is two words, git what? push, git push, and that will push all of my changes to the remote. If I reload, I now see that I have the new git ignore file and a new section to the readme file. 